Very good. Here is a very, very nice, uh, looks like two-part question from Love Conqueror, and it is Namaste Acharyaji. Please accept my humble obeisances. Likewise, please accept my obeisances as well. Would you please describe the proper attitude a sincere student, a, a, I see, a sincere student slash seeker should take toward initiation? I am eager to take shelter of initiation, but do not want to become attached and make mistakes. Thank you for offering this time, sir. Well, absolutely my pleasure. Uh, it's absolutely my pleasure to offer my time. My time belongs to all sincere students and seekers throughout the world. Uh, let me answer this both generally, but then very personally. Uh, generally speaking, the attitude that an individual must have if they are seeking initiation from a guru is several things. First of all, of course, they have to be sincere in their seeking of initiation. So first of all, why is the person seeking initiation? You see, I'm someone who I've been on this path for 50 years, roughly, uh, 49, 49 years to be exact. And I've seen everything. I've seen every guru come through America. I've seen all sorts of movements. I've seen all sorts of yogis and swamis. I've seen every phenomenon. I've seen uh, new mantras made up and introduced. I've seen very authentic gurus in addition to frauds. I've seen everything imaginable. And sadly, uh, one thing that I've seen is that very often individuals will not understand what is the purpose even of initiation. They think it's magic. They think that quite literally, oh, by taking initiation, oh, if I take initiation from this great guru, some magical power will be invested unto me. And of course, you know, what, uh, what motivates such a spirit in the, in, on the part of the seeker is not something good. They see the guru and they see initiation as something cheap. But this, with this understanding, true initiation is something in which, indeed, the individual has to be radically sincere. They have to be appro approaching the guru for initiation for the right reason. The reason why a person approaches a guru for initiation is one primary thing. It's several things, but it's one primary thing. And that is that they now want to take their own spiritual life seriously. And it means that they now want to practice sadhana, sanatana dharma. It means that they now want to learn in a deeper way. In such a manner now that now they have, uh, they have declared in a way to the world, to the cosmos, that no, my goal now is indeed to have liberation from this world. And this is why they seek initiation, is because now they're signaling to the cosmos itself that, all right, I've dabbled with this and that. I've certainly dabbled in this material world with every sort of pleasure that's here. I've dabbled with this philosophy, that philosophy, all sorts of various forms of spirituality, half serious, half not serious, half sincere, half not sincere. But now they're signaling to the world that, now I am seriously ready to pursue this path to its ultimate goal. And that is absolute existential liberation. And that being the case, now they wish to be empowered on the path by their guru in such a way that they can indeed achieve that. That is the purpose for seeking initiation. So the person must have sincerity. The prospective disciple has to have humility. Without humility, humility is a massive, massive 15-ton anchor tied to your ankle that will keep you from advancing. We must have humility. And all that humility means is properly knowing our place. That's all. doesn't mean that we have no self-confidence. On the contrary, we have confidence, but in accordance with who we are realistically. Oh, am I the greatest person upon the face of the earth? No, no. Where am I? Oh, kind of in between. Oh, I'm pretty good, but I'm not the best. Just simply having an honest self-assessment. That's humility. That's humility. Uh, a disciple indeed has to have intelligence. There's no way around this. You know, the, I've said this a million times. Sanatana Dharma is not an egalitarian path in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. Any individual, any guru, doesn't matter if they have a beard down to here. 
if they tell you that, oh, Sanatana Dharma believes that all beings are equal and, and anyone can do X, that person is a rotten liar. No, Sanatana Dharma, that is practicing this path seriously, not just mehinduhum, not just saying, oh, I am Hindu, but that being a meaningless statement. No, for an individual to be following the path seriously and their goal is to know God, they have to be intelligent. They have to be moral. They have to be spiritually the elite. Let me just state this bluntly. In uh, American modernity, we can't hear this. We'll throw our, our hands over our ears. But this is the teaching of Sanatana Dharma and, frankly, every other uh, traditional religious path upon the face of the earth. If you wish to be an individual who wants to achieve the apex of spirituality, if you want to be a successful yogi, a successful monk, a successful spiritual practitioner in any way, a priest, etc., 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 you must be someone who is the best of the best. That means you're intelligent. That means you're disciplined. That means that you are someone who has perseverance. And I can go on and on with a very long list of things that indeed the disciple must have. So, indeed, these are the pre prerequisites for an individual who wishes to be on the path. And more, this is the last thing I'm going to say about this aspect. But I'm not finished answering your question. Uh, the last thing I'm going to say is this. The disciple must have all of these qualities that I mentioned and many, many more. Again, I don't want to go on for two hours. But more than this, the disciple is taking initiation, must be taking initiation from a guru who is the same and has also proven himself. The guru has to be someone who is the elite of the elite of the elite. They also have to be humble. They also have to be sincere. They also have to have intelligence, wisdom. They also have to be someone who is self-disciplined. They also have to be someone who, when they claim they're a guru, they sit like a guru. They look like a guru. They act like a guru. They think like a guru, etc., etc., etc. And thus, when you have that perfect coming together of the guru who is truly authentic with the disciple who is an authentic an authentic disciple seeking authenticity then you have that perfect relationship of guru and shishya so this is indeed what it means to be a disciple and thank you for asking this everyone asks uh, what are the qualities of a guru but very few people ask what are the qualities of the disciple only a sincere person does because the qualities of a guru, oh, just read the Vedic scriptures, they're everywhere. You will find lists of the qualities that a guru has to have. Indeed, it's always, um, it's always very sad to me when people kind of throw their hands up in the air. Oh, how do I know if a guru is real? I don't know. I... And the information is all there. It's in the Bhagavad Gita, it's in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's in the Upanishads, it's in the Mahabharata, it's everywhere. How to know when a guru is for real. But you ask something very intelligent, and this is also important. How do we know if the disciple is for real and is sincere? So thank you for asking that. 